Okay, the book of the week is an excellent book. Africa is not a country by Deepo Faloyan. The subheading, Breaking Stereotypes of Modern Africa. Now, Deepo Faloyan appeared at the Franchuk Literary Festival via Zoom, where he was interviewed excellently by Johnny Steinberg, who has written Winnie and Mandela, which I'm halfway through. I'll review that for you next week. As with all Johnny Steinberg books, utterly compelling. But his interview with Deepo Faloyan was fascinating. And this is an important book, and it's a good book. Because it basically takes the colonial history of Africa, especially West Africa, and aggressively reframes it from an African viewpoint. I didn't learn much in terms of facts. All of the Congress of Berlin and the divide of the African continent by arrogant European countries, the appalling behavior of the Belgians in Congo, of the uh, Germans in Namibia, of the Portuguese in Angola, of the British in various places... Yeah, I knew all of that, but it was really good to have it reframed and fed back to me in a different way. Faloyan was born in the United States, but spent most of his life in Lagos in Nigeria and now is in London. And his book is an answer to all the stereotype questions he gets put to him. And one thing he does demonstrate, he says, everyone says, oh, African nations are disasters. And he makes the profound point that those nations were set up to fail. He said European nation states evolved over hundreds of years along geographical or ethnic or linguistic or religious logic. They had an inherent coherence. He said African nations did not. Nigeria has hundreds of languages, many faiths, two dominant, three dominant tribes, which the British played off against each other. It was a totally artificial concept. There was no Nigerian patriotism. It was a colonial construct, and the British then just left and said, right, all yours. It had no identity, and building an identity was almost impossible. He acknowledges that African states have been run appallingly by vain, self-serving, violent people, usually men. But he says there was little chance in the first place. Because of the way it was constructed and because of the fact that African countries have straight line borders. Straight line borders make no sense. There's no straight line borders in Europe. They're all around mountain ranges or rivers or around some sort of reason for the border. A straight line border is just drawn on a map somewhere in Europe. Nobody cares. And that divides tribes. It divides families. It divides faiths. And it creates a problem. It's an interesting perspective. It's worth reading. And it begins with one of the best bits of writing that I have read in many a long day. Now, I've never been to Lagos. But this piece of writing at the start of this book by Deepo Faloyan takes you and me to Lagos. This is what he writes. Lagos is full. At any moment, Nigeria's unofficial capital is certain to burst revealing it's been hiding a smaller, more functional metropolis this whole time. By population, it's London, New York and Uruguay combined, with room to spare for any Latvian curious to sample the world's most perfectly seasoned chaos. It's three times Johannesburg and Nairobi, double Cairo, and can fit everybody in Namibia 20 times over. Ghana is a great nation, but no one would notice if you swapped Ghana's entire population size for the Lagos metropolitan area. Lagos is the punchline to a joke that could start 21 million people unburdened by self-doubt walked into a bar. The point is, there is a lot of people in Lagos, none of them are shy. Lagos is loud and plagued by joy. It sounds like impatience and over-familiarity. It moves like a culture built on faith and certainty being the same thing. It's stitched to the same vague tones of a dream, where imagination seems to outpace movement, and progress is grounded in intention, if not reality. You're hearing a never-ending scream of car horns, reminding you that at their core, Nigerians love nothing more than to warn you of their presence. Here in Lagos, it's understandable, though. Everyone is either driving too fast to be preoccupied with your safety or fixed in the bumper-to-bumper traffic that scars every inch of the city, threading through the region's two main hubs, the mainland and Lagos Island, crawling past districts soaked in wealth and culture and neighbourhoods where families are literally living in swamp. Traffic is, in fact, the city's official sport, an unavoidable discipline, 
for everyone, from waiters to the CEOs of multinational banks. For everyone who is not an elected official in Lagos, thinking small is a sin, as is arriving anywhere on time. You will come to reason that if everyone is running late, then everyone's actually early. Many of your habits will change. You'll become possessed of a passion for using your outside voice at all times, regardless of location and in spite of circumstance. To welcome, to explain, to pray, to haggle, to wish someone well, to wish someone great harm. Live in Lagos and you'll learn to speak the local dialect. dialect. Please hurry up. I don't have time. Sooner than you wish. Lagos smells like fresh fruit and diesel. Boy, that is a magnificent piece of writing. The rest of the book, I have to be honest, isn't as good as that. It couldn't possibly be. But it's still really, really good. I recommend it. Africa is not a country. Breaking Stereotypes of Modern Africa by Depot Faloyan. It is available at exclusive books.